Adoken! Anoop Hoti for K1 Anoop here with undoubtedly the greatest Rory kickboxing champion there has been and could well be again. Nikki, the natural whole skin. Yes. Um, it's been interesting times. My mate Chris Deckers was, was interviewing you earlier. He reported on you feeling that you may not be as wanted as you once were by Rory. You don't have the belt around your waist when you go into the ring tomorrow, yeah. but you have a legacy and you have probably undoubtedly the biggest profile in all kickboxing. Going into this now, are you really as upset as that article made it out to be, or are you not too fussed about it? Not, not, not so much, it's not so big, but uh, I only said that uh, it looks like that Glory wants to get rid of me yeah. because they put me in number seven of the world. And that's uh, ridiculous. I don't understand that. Uh, I have five world championships, titles from Glory. I have uh, been four or five years undefeated. And now there are people above me who just has one fight in Glory. So that's really stupid. So uh, I don't understand why they do that, but uh, that's the only thing I say. It's not that I'm disappointing in Glory, but I'm only disappointing in whoever keeps the rankings. But it's an age old thing, isn't it? Fighters in all promotions, in all disciplines, they always have issues with rankings. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, in kickboxing, uh, real kickboxing, we know that it's not about who is some promotion champion, it's not about some ranking. We know, we, we the kickboxing crew as fans, we know who the best of the best are. Yes. Including yourself. Um, I mentioned the word legacy. Obviously, you're doing pro boxing, and that's heading in a good direction. And you, you, you mentioned about that could be the potential future. Yeah. And that uh, you could probably fight elsewhere where you might be better rewarded. But do you really want to continue in kickboxing going into the new year, like taking whatever is the next chapter beyond redemption yeah. away from Rory? Because like, Rory's like grown a lot, been through some tough times, even now in much better waters. It's not that I want to go away from glory, but uh, I need uh, more fights and uh, I hope I stay healthy and uh, not injured so I can get more fights. But I have to fight for glory and uh, after I win those two fights then we're going to sit around the table and talk about uh, our future plans together. And uh, yeah, I'm also uh, going uh, further with my boxing. And uh, my dream is to become world champion with boxing. I always dream about that. And all my dreams in, in, in kickboxing are gone. I already, um, all the dreams where I dreamed of, I already received them. So now it's my only dream to give the fans and, and myself a good fight. After I lost from uh, Sadak Dumbe, now main, um, the main thing for me is to give the fans a good fight and not be disappointed in myself after a fight. If I win or lose, I have to know that I give everything in a fight. And my last two fights with Dumbe, for anyhow, I didn't do that. So that's not Nikki uh, who I know, you know? And now uh, that's my only goal give the fans and myself good fights. The title, yeah, it's nice to have a, again a glory title, but I already have five. It sounds super stupid, but many people dreamed of one, but I have five. So the only thing what I like is that I give good fights and, and win fights, and, and, and after the fight that I can say to myself, yeah, you beat them. You, you, you give a good fight to the people, and to that. And the last two fights were shit fights for me. So I don't know what was happening with me, but uh, I have to make it uh, good for myself again. It's a bit of harsh self-criticism, but I can't understand it because losing really sucks. Yeah. And, yeah, it, it, and, and, and also against a guy who's not stronger than me, who's not better than me, who has not more reach than me, but just that I fight myself in a fight. Oh, yes. let's, let's talk about Dumbe. Yeah. You know, it's, it's 2 0 to him. But that's in that second last fight. What, I know you, you had like a knee injury, I read up somewhere. Something that like that was my first fight, yeah. That's the first one with the first, him? The first one, yeah. Okay, so how was your body going into the, the rematch with Dumbe? Yeah. You know, I trained so hard, I think. I trained too hard for the second fight. I have no injury, I have nothing, my mind was good. But I think I do too much because the end of my training camp, I was not peaking anymore. I only go down, and that's because I was 
maybe tired or exhausted. I was already on on weight one week before the fight. I never have uh, had that in my career. Now is the opposite. Now is um, the last three weeks of my training camp. I was speaking. I was very sharp. I was like normally, you know. So I already felt before the fight that I was not completely fit. I, I could fight for five rounds, yeah. but I was not. I, I was not thinking and uh, secure about myself as I normal would be. I have doubts about myself. You and don't normally have those doubts on the table. Never, 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 never. And now I go to France. I fight in France against a French guy who is champion. So I'm already three 0 behind. So my only thing was thinking in the fight. And I should not think about those things in the fight. Ah, I'm gonna knock you out. I'm gonna knock. No, it comes naturally. But I only was thinking, come, come to fight. I knock you out. I knock you out. And then I forget to to make my points. I put pressure, but I forget to make my point. And Dumbe, respect for him. He's very smart. He don't gonna fight with me. He knows he's gonna get knocked out if he go in, uh, in the punching. Uh, uh, with me so he, he makes his points he slips he, he, he jumps away he, yeah he does a good job and i was stupid i fight myself in the fight i see myself two times in the fight you know when it when, when that rematch happened and i saw it unfold in front of me there what came into my head was when you fought raymond daniels yeah. you cut off the angles you got yeah. him in the corner you beat him up and i really thought that you were going to implement that game plan against me but it just didn't happen no because my mindset was not good yeah. that's my key i'm an emotional guy we all are though mm -hmm. we, we, i think it's fair to say all of us anything yeah. anyone's got anything to do with fighting we are kind yeah of. but if your mindset is not good for a fight then you cannot win you can win with luck but you know against Raymond daniels two times my mindset was i'm gonna cut the the angles i'm gonna demolish you i'm gonna hit you to the body i'm gonna put pressure so you cannot kick my my lungs out of my life so uh, it's a different mindset different okay so mindset. apart from the physical side of things obviously the, the, the being injury free makes a world of a difference and like you said you know like with your weight management it was, it was very different and yeah. yeah that's gonna throw anyone off when it, when it goes the opposite direction for us. Yeah. but then the adaptations you've had from a, a, a psychological sense um, yeah. Apart from the physical, what would you say those are? What, what if, how have you told yourself mentally to, to switch on better this time around? I found myself again. I found myself again in the gym. I'm, 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 I'm much more motivated than the last two years. The last two years, I still, every time I fight for a world title, every time I win the fight, sometimes it was close. But the motivation goes back 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 now i lose everybody say oh he's old he's done that gives me more motivation that puts me back in the gym every day i take more rest i i i, I um, eat healthier i do everything better than before so it's all up to me now just to only uh, win my next fights do you think that maybe juggling boxing and kickboxing you know maybe that might have had an, an impact on you physically? No, I, I don't think so. I think it only was uh, the fight with Dumbe. Yeah. I lost the first fight with injuries because I had a fight with Murti uh, Kuna five weeks before that fight. So I fought two world title fights in one month. I think there's nobody who do that. But uh, I let my emotions run control. And uh, Dumbe said a lot of things in the first fight about me and put my head in his hand and my children see that and I get emotional and I think man I'm gonna fuck this motherfucker up. And then in the fight I go with injury and then it's not working because my mindset is not good. I feel like uh, I want to murder, some, murder somebody but it's not sportsman. You're ships. always in emotional control before you fight, sir. Yes, yes, I'm always at peak. And uh, I think I'm now at peak. Now it's very good. I don't know if you see my last trainings and uh, my sparring and uh, my past training. And my body, my body looks better than uh, before. Uh, 
Yeah. Everything is 100% now. It only has to happen tomorrow. I'll tell you his hard work I have seen. And I'm very, very impressed with your sons. My son, yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> doing a very good job. Yeah. yeah, he came to England, beat some other kid up. There was a lot of controversy around that. Yeah, I God know. almighty. Yeah. Um, I've still got the message on my phone. Just, but obviously, I think people can tell my accent, I'm, I'm British. With your son growing up and looking up to you, we've all gone through that phase when we were a child. Um, we look up to our dad, our dad is, is Superman. Yeah. Um, were you ever concerned about, like, with, with your son, about him getting into fighting? Because you're a fighting man. Yeah. Yeah. For me, he don't have to fight. Uh, for me, it's important that he do. He gets his uh, diploma at school. That's for me important. But if he wants, then he can do it. But if he trains, he has to train good. Uh, and he has to stay normal, not uh, get a bad attitude or something. Just stay normal, natural, and relaxed. And uh, yeah, I think he's doing that. He's, he, he don't fight at school. And uh, if somebody get bullied, he helps this guy. And uh, I like those, I like those kind of charities, you know. And I, and I build them. So uh, he has seven fights, seven wins. He do a good job. But he wants it himself. Every day he trains, or three times, four times a week he trains, and then afterwards he makes smoothies with my wife, and uh, he's very healthy also. So, uh, and always he asks me, Dad, what can I do for this, or what can I do for that, to make me better, and, that, and then I help him. So if he wants to uh, become world champion, what I think is going to happen in the future, I will support him every, always. Yeah, that's pretty good, I mean, especially that he's winning this tomorrow. Yeah, he's, got, he's, he's doing that himself. That's really yeah, good. Yeah. But let's say um, he, you know he gets a few years older and he sort of changes direction. How do you think you'll deal with that now that you're a bit older and wiser yourself? Do you think he's going to change direction yeah. in a good way. In any way, let, uh, let's just away from kickboxing. Let's say one day he just. Then I support him still. Then I still will support him. It's not that I'm a fighter, he has to fight. It's about guidance. It's about guidance and that he had a good life. And that he is happy with the things he do. Because we, I mean, we, you and I are both aware probably from other people that the sport come across where some parents, or some dads, are living their dream for their sons. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure and it yeah. doesn't work out very well. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work out. I am now with my career for a few more years and afterwards uh, everything what my son and my daughter wants to do. My, son, my daughter driving horse. I don't like horses but I every, every, every match she has I'm with her, with her. You know, I just support my children and what they want to do. If my son says, Dad, uh, and now I want to be a street dancer, okay, go, go street dancing. Now we play darts. Every Monday he go darts. Yeah. He play darts, yeah. What with your father and all, or hmm? himself? Himself in the competition. So uh, when he go, uh, I'm going to watch him. So he's got very good hand-eye coordination. Yeah, yeah, very good, yeah. Oh, uh, a little secret ninja in the making, then, yeah? Yes, I build him in good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you mentioned the word motivation a few times. Ismail Lont and I spoke about motivation as well. That was his key issue over the last year, in around injuries and so forth. You said that, you know, people doubt you, motivate you. You said you want to put on good things for the fans. You said you've, you've same, won everything. Same with me now. Yeah, you said you've won everything, but surely a champion like yourself wants to not just be known and you should come as one of the best, be absolutely one of this dominant. You know, you just want to make it not fun for everyone else. You want to do that again, but make it not fun for everyone else. They want to fight you to, oh, he's a, a champion for another fight, three, four or five years. Yeah. Do you want to do that again and battle? Or do you just want to put on performance? I, not, I did not think about that. I only think about that my next few fights has to be perfect for me. If it's not perfect, I, I quit the kickboxing and I go boxing. I have to, it has to be perfect. It, has, it don't have to be good. No, it has to be perfect. I do so much work for this. Yeah. I train so hard. I do so many hours. So much uh, that I'm, uh, how you say, in a bad mood at home with my children and wife because I have to uh, go on diet. I have to sleep. Uh, my, sometimes my children want to go to McDonald's. I cannot go because I cannot eat that. So everything what I have to. Uh, uh, put away what I cannot do and, and put so much work in my training it has to come out it has to come out and it always has come out except the last two fights but the last two fights was against the same opponent mm -hmm. so maybe not 
maybe that opponent is not made for me and it's not the kind of fight style what I like or something. I have to find out. I have to find out in my next fights. You know what this kind of reminds me of a little bit in a way is when Carl Frock fought Lucien Butte yeah. and he said some similar things to what you're saying today yeah. to me. And then he went and, and Lucien's a one hell of a technical boxer and he just went out there and destroyed him. Yeah. Alan's no, no, you know, he's no pushover, he's a bloody good fighter like yourself. Every, yeah. All the purists know him, all the fans know him. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it sounds like you've got, your, you've got that extra hunger back, which is good. Yeah, and I felt it in the last three, four weeks in the training it was brilliant you know brilliant I, I could go all the way and after the training I was recovery my recovery was in like 30 30 minutes I was back I, I could train again so that's what I what I mean I didn't have that power and physique in the last fight with Dumbay. I didn't have that. But I have a good opponent now also. He's a very good opponent who I fight tomorrow. He's an upcoming talent. He's younger than me. Uh, so I have to be sharp and ready. And I am sharp and ready. Only tomorrow it, it has to come out. Indeed. Also tomorrow, Rika Vahalan gets his rematch with Jamel Ben Sadiq. Yeah. And he spoke about how Dumbay got in your head. And obviously we all saw what happened at the press conference a couple of weeks ago. Uh, unfortunately, Jamel kind of, you know, uh, spat at Rico. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's all kicking off, isn't it, lately? There's a lot more pressure, high stakes. Do you think that like, even though Rico's wiser, maturer, do you think under the surface that's still going to rattle him a little bit? Of course. And you don't have to forget that he's been knocked out once before, what, in 2011 by Ben Sadek. So it all works. You can say, no, I, don't, I say it myself against the first fight with Dumbay. No, it's not in my head. No, I don't gonna get crazy about what he said. But under the skin, it, 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 it uh, how you say? Manifest. Yeah, and then uh, and then you're gonna you're gonna think different before a fight, and that's not what you have to do. You have to think that you're the best, that you're unbeatable, and that you're strong. And if Rico does that tomorrow, then he's gonna win. If he don't do that, yeah, then he's gonna get mis then he make mistakes and he could lose the fight. So it's very. I'm not. I can, uh, my ball is in the room, so I cannot look who's gonna win. <laughs> but I, I can come back if you want in ten minutes. <laughs> no, no, that's cool, man. It's, it's it's good to have a sit down with you finally. Okay. Um, and like I was saying to you before we start recording, every time I cross paths with you, there's always fans, and you always seem to make you always make time. There's, there's a queue of fans I always see, and I was like, he's actually making time. You are to to. You know, to talk to these fans, you know take what? photos and stuff, like, I'll, I'll let you be, I'm not going to interrupt. You know, 16 years before, before I was uh, famous, uh, I worked uh, as a garbage garbage man. Yeah? Yeah, I throw bags with garbage from people. So. Oh, I is that why you said in one of your old interviews, you said that you've, you've done other jobs in the past? Yeah, and I always work. You, that's what you hated, and that's what you might fight. Yeah, I, I, I worked till, till I was from my 14 years till 20, 22. I worked. Yeah, just do what refuse collection and other stuff. Sorry, the refuse collection or, or other things. No, just uh, I go from school when I was 16, yeah. and then I start uh, working uh, in the construction. I uh, get fired, then I work uh, as, a, as a butcher, I get fired, then I, uh, but I was training and I always was late because I was sleepy in the morning and yeah. then I get garbage boy for two and a half years and uh, yeah but I never be ashamed of that but I never will never how famous I are I will never forget that I did that in the past so every, every time uh, that motivates me also every time uh, when I have no um, uh, no mood for training then I think back uh, at those days when I'm walking in the rain uh, throwing bags so, uh, so I'm proud of myself and uh, what I have achieved and uh, I will always be natural normal and uh, I will always stay humble and win now defeat I just try to do my best for me my, my family and my fans on the subject of family um, I remember when Joe Shinning made a few appearances on uh, the Joe Rogan experience Joe Rogan podcast and they were talking about Albert Krauss and yourself your name came up as well and they were talking about background upbringing what's your gypsy yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, um, where I live about a decade in, in England yeah. all my Staying neighbors like Tyson Fury yeah yeah, yeah. Like Tyson Fury yeah yeah, yeah. Only we live in houses. 
Uh, yeah. Some of my neighbours, they, they, they yeah, grandparents used to do we just, the we just, we just normal people, yeah. like anyone else, but we have some different culture. Do you think that that kind of family culture was a big factor for why you became a fighter or was it something else? Yeah, it was uh, also, yeah, because teachers hated me at school because my family was coming from, uh, you know, like gypsy, yeah. like travelers. And then uh, we get, uh, how you say, uh, same as you uh, as you are uh, black in Holland, then you get discriminated. But we all also get discriminated. So it was always something to fight up. How is how's the, the sort of socio-economic trends, changes? in the Netherlands because Bader Harry says something to Todd Grisham and he's interviewing collusion and no one picked up on it about Todd was saying about people fans, uh, who, they, who they reckon is going to win and he said something back to him about who um, the white Dutch people and Todd Grisham didn't pick up on that it was something in those lines and uh, okay, I, I read a bit and I kind of know about some of the issues that there have been with different races in the Dutch. You've mentioned it about the travel community and how it was when you were a kid. How has that changed whether someone's brown or someone's black or someone's traveler with sort of the Dutch white like, general public? Has that attitude improved in the last decade and a half or is it got it's always a bit more be, It's always stays the same. Always? Yeah, it stays the same. If you're Moroccan, Dutch, uh, Moroccan, Turkish, uh, Alban, Albanese, uh, if you are a traveller, you always been put in a certain corner in Holland. Even in 2017? Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I was like, go, um, I don't know, to the Alps. Like, I remember like, on some school trips to the Alps, and I would always meet really cool Dutch people. They would know like, five different languages, they could have a drink, yeah. they, they the camera laughed, they were lovely, friendly people. That's my first time I met Dutch people from a really kid. And I was like, they're so cool, they're so multi they seem so multicultural, they seem like easy to get along with. But what are these? But they do that in your face when you turn around, they talk different. Yeah, yeah I noticed in my life. Then what about when you became a superstar? And then they all want to get up in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> or even the TV shows? Sorry? Even the TV shows and stuff like that? I mean, the mainstream media attention out. Yeah. How are they? Uh, they only think about money. They want to put on television uh, what they want to put there. <laughs> yeah, it's complica I'm a complicated, complicated No, guy. I don't think you're complicated at all. Uh, you've not shown me anything that's complicated about you. We're just having a very, the pair of some of the candid conversation. Like, I'm fortunate I've grown up in Greater London. Now, that city is very cosmopolitan. But in the 90s, it wasn't all hunky dory. You know, there, were, there were issues then compared to now. I feel, in my opinion, with all not just Trump being elected as president of the US, I think the stuff of Brexit and you know the second Iraq war, I think there's a lot of and obviously like, other things that happened in the Middle East. I think all of that has kind of made people more on edge. Yeah. Would you say that's been an influencing factor in the Netherlands, or is this, or it, the Netherlands has its own issues separate from wider world issues? In Holland, it's always the same. Uh, if you if you are a champion, everybody wants to hang around with you, and if you lose one time, everybody puts you under the right you off. In the, yeah, right you off and put you in the ground. And if you win again, then they come with, oh, you want something to drink? No, fuck off, I don't want to drink. No. I have my family and my fans and uh, I know who really believes in me and really are behind me and that's the, the people where I focus on. You know what the I haters and doubters. You know what I'm sensing? Get a life. I'm sensing um, a vibrancy from you that I kind of get from Myrtle Groenhart. Now the two of you have had a fair few dust ups, yeah. but um, the two of you get along quite well. Yeah, we get along. Yeah, because when I've seen that from a distance, and I see also how your fans engage with Myrtle. There's a lot of camaraderie, a lot of yeah, mutual respect. Yeah, yeah, just normal. Because uh, we came from the same, uh, from the same, uh, how you say? He's also been not bullied, but also been put in a in a in a, in a corner in his life, you know, because he's black. It's very difficult in Holland. Yeah, you're both from, I think the, the, the socialists would say the margins of society be marginalised. Yeah. Um, which, which isn't on, which isn't right. But we can only hope and, 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 and 
education let's, teaching. Let's focus on the fight. Yeah. Let's focus at the moment. Now I'll go to the city with my family, they're waiting. So I'm gonna drink something and eat something and then tomorrow uh, Ready to Tomorrow's rumble. fireworks. Ready to rumble. Yeah. Good. Social media, where can everyone find and follow you? Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Awesome. Nice and time, mate. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Never thought that I could make it this far. Yeah. Got a long way to go, but I'm this far. Oh. Who'd have thought that I could hit rock bottom? Yeah. Come back and made blood like this far. Oh. Moving like a rocket.